So I'm quite proud of the fact that I'm not a professional. A professional basically gets paid to do what they do. Me, I'm a dyed in the wool amateur. An amateur comes from the French to love. I do it because I love it, not because I'm paid to do it. If you love something and are paid to do something, well, that's a bonus. If you just do it because you're paid, chances are you hate doing it. But I love doing engineering and struggling with engineering problems because it's the journey that matters. I mean, it's like going out on a date. You don't go out on a date to rush your partner to the bedroom and get it over with because that's the point of a date. Why waste time? You go on a date to get to know somebody, to take the journey with them, to really develop a relationship, and it's the journey that matters. Now, at the moment, of course, we're working on this thing. And what this thing needs to do is take this point and place it anywhere in space on that plane, and we're pretty much there, actually. If I twiddle this little handle at the back, then that will rotate, placing that point along a line. If I rotate this compact cylinder here, then that will rotate along another line, and so we can cover every point of space on this plane. And to do that, we used these things, gears. Gears are awesome. I mean, they're stable, they're well known, they've been around for hundreds of years, they do the job, and if I was a professional, this is probably where I would stop. Actually, if I was a professional, I probably never would have started, because we've already got tooth belts and nemas, why bother? But, Exploring this as an idea, as an amateur, means I also want to explore some other things beyond just gears. Because, of course, gears have their own problems. I mean, backlash and expense being a couple of them. And what I thought might be interesting is to explore a friction drive. Now, friction is any drive system where you're using the static friction to transfer torque. And normally you have two surfaces in contact where one is hard and the other has a bit of flexibility. There's a high degree of coefficient. There's a force applied at normal to the actual surfaces and torque transfer will occur. Put it another way, if I have a bicycle, what I've got is a flat plane, which is the road, and that's got a high coefficient of friction, so it's nice and grippy. We've got a rolling cylinder here, and it's made of rubber, and it's got another nice high coefficient of friction, and of course, this can roll on the road. All we're missing here is the force component. So if I sit on it, what I'll do is basically weigh down that way, and so we have a force acting here, which is normal to the road, that is at 90 degrees to the road. Then we have all of the criteria for a friction drive, and that's exactly what this is. It's a friction drive. And of course, this is absolutely all over the place. This kind of arrangement is in buses, cars, trucks, locomotives, bicycles, wheelchairs, everywhere. You see this being put into practical operation. So friction drives are just very common. So friction drives, they're simple to make, they're adjustable, they're quiet in operation, and of course they're cost effective. Now set against that is they are subject to more wear and tear, and they have limited torque transfer capabilities. But when deciding on using something, it's always a balance of pros and cons set against the application you want to make, because everything has pros and cons, and it's really just about the suitability of the application you're making, whether it'll fit or not. Now, to be honest, I've got no real idea, but I fancy trying it to see if we can get it to do what we can do, because we know that friction drives have the ability, and this is important in something like 3D printing, to go down to the nanometer scale when it comes to accuracy. So that's a big draw for me. Question is, Will it actually work? And of course, being a hands-on kind of guy when it comes to learning things, what I want to do next is make a friction drive that approximates what it is that I'm going to be looking for when we're looking to stick it in here. And this is the design I came up with as a test friction drive to have a look at some ideas I think might be helpful when it comes to making a friction drive. Now this big wheel here has got a, a kind of rim on it that has a conical cross-section and it of course presses into the bobbin. 
being conical means that it's going to self-centre and as we push that in of course it's going to get a nice size of area that it can actually rub on. PLA doesn't have the highest friction coefficient but it should be fine for what we want it for. Of course depending on which one we drive and it won't matter which one we drive it's both a step up and a step down drive. Uh, this remember needs that force normal so here's where the friction needs to be applied the normal force needs to go in that direction there at 90 degrees and what we're going to do is use a couple of springs on there to press this down take up the wear and apply a normal force okay let's put that together Right, here are the bits, and I think it's pretty straightforward. Now, that bit's going to be the top. That bit is going to take the cone, and that feeds in there. And then on these indentations, we have four of those sides, and the sides glue onto the indentation with this bobbin having an axle pushed through it. Right, with that glued together like that, we glue the axle in that piece and then we have these two bits and they just go onto the axle like that and that. And you'll see there's two indentations. We want to make sure that they're facing upward as we slide it into here. There we go, like that, and that will drop into place. Now the top goes on. The top goes on in that direction there, and before we shove the top down, there's a gap here, and that spring goes into the gap right there. And once that's together like that, we turn that handle, and of course this will turn. There we go, we have ourselves a friction drive. Now it's pretty simple and straightforward. But it embodies all of the principles, or at least I think it embodies all of the principles necessary for a successful friction drive. And the one that everybody forgets is the spring. The force that is normal to where the friction is applied is super important, and of course the spring is what does that. Now we don't think about it much because when you're sitting on a bike, your weight is supplying that force and it doesn't seem to be part of the system. If you're not sitting on the bike, well, you're not supplying that force and we make a structure like this we need to supply that force so that spring is super important and actually that spring is the bit that limits the torque if this turning force is greater than the spring force then it will just stop turning the spring determines what the torque is and it's essential and usually forgotten but there you go very simple friction drive for those basic principles and we can take that and do something else with it to make it more usable. All we're doing here really is looking at the basic principles. Anyway, I will put that on the universe should anybody be interested in it. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.